I am Linda Duhon LaCour. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the Tyrrell Historical Library. And I thank you for joining us today. If this is your first time being at the Tyrrell, we hope that you'll come back soon. If you've been here before, come back soon. Um, this is a wonderful event, and we are so proud to be here talking about it and showing it off to all of you. So thank you for being here. I have two public service announcements. The bathrooms are down this hall behind the stacks, here behind the book stacks. To the right, it's down that hall. The other is please be careful when you're walking so that you don't bump into the cameras. We've got several of them in the room so you don't bump into the cameras or trip over the wires. Mr. Grace, would you join us, please? Yeah, I'm Bill Grace. I'm the branch manager here at the Terrell Historical Library. Want to welcome you all here. It's very, you know, great pleasure to have you. We're uh, very pleased to be uh, receiving these two uh, films that were done under uh, Gordon Williams. Uh, actually, Gordon came in, I guess it's been about three years ago, and he did some filming for the Charlton Pollard, and he spent about a day here, so we we're real pleased that, you know, we could, you know, be a, a asset to, you know, the actual uh, uh, creation of that particular film. And uh, I just want to kind of give you an idea. We do uh, have a outstanding... Uh, local history archive upstairs. We have, of course, a digital presence online. Uh, we also have a very good uh, local Beaumont history collection as well as genealogy. So hopefully you can all come in at some particular point. We may even give you know, a behind the scenes tour today. So, but we're always you know, wanting to you know, make the public aware of our resources and you know the value of our institution. So I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the library is about. Our hours are, of course are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if you have any questions today I'll be happy to answer them. We also uh, would like you to take our resource guide with you. It gives you a you know, full explanation of you know, what sources of information, what types of services uh, that we do offer. And I'll just pull one from the rack just so you know what it looks like so you can take one uh, with you. Yeah, they're, they're distributed throughout the room, so just, you know, help yourself. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am honored to be here today on behalf of Beaumont Heritage Society to speak briefly and to barely scratch the surface of the contributions that Gordon Williams, Lamar University, and LUTV are making to all of our mutual benefits. Beaumont Heritage Society is a small nonprofit dedicated to the preservation and education of history here in Beaumont. We own and operate the 1845 John J. French Museum and we operate the 1907 Chambers House Museum. We had a special opportunity to show They Will Talk About Us, the Charlton Pollard story as part of our exhibit titled By Their Hands, The Lives and History of Domestic Workers at the Chambers Family Home. The exhibit depicts the living conditions of domestic employees of the Chambers family from 1914 and specifically focuses on the lives and work of Nona Williams, Fanny Bowie, and Etta Mack. The documentary was an integral part of the story, filling in the gaps of community that the history of our own house lacked. They will talk about us provided what our objects could not, context and connection and a deeper understanding of a fully lived experience. When we interpret and exhibit, we are placing objects in a room in a house that's no longer lived in. It's through storytelling that we are able to truly connect with our past. What our objects represent, how they're used, and the emotional connections to those items, there's no better way to imagine yourself walking in the footsteps of others than through film. 
Through the act of their creation, these films themselves become a part of our history, perpetuating a cycle of art imitating life, imitating art imitating life. We are participating in moments now that may be lived again in another 100 years. That is what makes these works so special and so necessary. Because what is history but moments past without a conduit to understand it? Art allows us, to ac allows us to access that history in profound ways, inviting us to understand and commemorate the past in a manner that transcends time and place. Through art, we remember, reflect, and connect. We engage with history not just as passive observers, but as active participants in a shared human experience. Without art, history lacks the human element that binds us all together. So thank you, Gordon Williams, Lamar University, and LUTV for your contributions to our history and for creating new moments to be shared well into the future. And thank you to the Terrell Historical Library for preserving these very important pieces of history. Thank you. That was Shelby Brannon, and uh, just in case some of you don't know her, and so now Dr. Golden Wright, Dean of the College of Lamar University Fine Arts and Communications. You just warned me about that. <laughs> so, so those of you don't, that don't know who I am, I'm, I'm actually a retired dancer. This is what we look like when we're off stage. So, so thank you for that introduction. Um, and I'd also like to thank um, uh, my colleague and good friend, uh, Gordon Williams, for inviting me to be a part of today's presentation. So thank you very much. I've seen both of these films a number of times, and each time I experience the example or they will talk about us, the Charlton Pollard story, I notice and learn something new. These films offer a depth that keeps revealing fresh perspectives with each viewing. Often these screenings are followed by sessions with filmmakers where we, the audience, have the opportunity to engage in meaningful question and answer and discussions. These conversations create a platform for people from diverse backgrounds to come together, foster understanding, and find common ground. Today we gather to celebrate not only the success of these two powerful films, but also the remarkable journey of the collaboration, learning, and creativity that brought them to life. These films are more than stories on a screen. They're a vivid illustration of the transformative power of student, student involvement in filmmaking. In the College of Fine Arts and Communication, we are committed to providing our students opportunities that reach beyond the classroom. When students are part of the process and creation of works such as these, something truly special happens. Students gain hands-on experience. They work alongside professionals. They learn the intricacies of storytelling, the technical craft, and the profound impact of bringing real stories to life. Through these projects, they experience every step of the process, from the concept to the final cut, gaining skills that will carry them far into their careers. The example, and they will talk about us, the Charlton Pollard story, are powerful vehicles for learning about human experience. These projects help students to explore history, culture, and social issues, to understand how they can use their voices to spark conversation and change. For many students, these projects become defining moments in their education and in their lives, showing them how the arts can bridge the gaps that foster understanding and give a voice to those who may not always have been heard. As we, as we celebrate the achievements of these two films, we also celebrate the power of student involvement in these projects. By nurturing students' passions and providing them with Im the tools and support they need to tell stories, we are shaping the next generation of art artists. Together, we are not only creating art, but we're building a legacy. Thank you to everyone that contributed to these two films. Your dedication, talent, and passion are a true testament. I'm honored to be here today for this special occasion as these two powerful films join the Terrell Historical Library Repository. At this time, I would like to invite to the podium my good friend and wonderful colleague, Gordon Williams, who was so instrumental in the creation of this and provided opportunities for our students to be a part of this from 
the making of it, the showing of it, the responses afterwards. We try, we strive to make, pre we strive to teach our students to be lifelong learners. And Gordon is a prime example of that kind of educator. So thank you very much. Good afternoon. On behalf of the cast and production crew of the example in LU TV Productions, they will talk about us, the Charlton Pollard story. I humbly stand before you as these award winning films are accepted into the repository at the Terrell Historical Library. To the staff of this historical entity, I am honored to see that you understand the importance of this work. Your willingness to preserve stories inspired by the 1943 Beaumont race riot and the oldest black neighborhood in Beaumont for citizens and for future generations is monumental. To the Lamar University Department of Communication and Media, the students, staff, faculty, and alumni are the genesis of this work. The talented content creators and filmmakers that have walked the halls of this department have and are continuing to create meaningful and life-changing work. Swiss American psychiatrist Elizabeth Kluver Ross states, there are only two emotions, love and fear. All positive emotions come from love and all negative emotions come from fear. To paraphrase her, love and fear cannot exist in the same place. Since reading the line, there were race riots in Detroit, Los Angeles, and Beaumont in 1943. I have experienced love, fear, and their derivatives. In 2003, there was an excitement in talking with my producing partner, Y. Cagle, about creating a documentary about this little known piece of Texas history. Reality clearly came into focus when we realized individuals, both black and white were not comfortable talking about the race riot. Fortunately, an older gentleman agreed to speak with us. With the production crew, we went into the interviewee's home. We bega began setting up the cameras and lights. And then we heard the words, get out. Obeying his orders, of course, we left. Reality came into focus that 60 years after this event, there was still fear in sharing the story. Also, the Dean of the College of Fine Arts and Communication at that time was contacted by community members asking why I was asking about the riot. After interviewing only seven people, plus more interesting inquiries, we lost steam. I was disappointed. My colleagues and I fell deeper in love with the craft of filmmaking and storytelling. Our success with projects and film festivals led us back to the race riot in 2012. With the joy that my fellow producers, Y. Cagle and Kenneth Dupuy and their families were feeling at the time on the brink of parenthood, they wanted to tell a story about fatherhood. I reflected on my father's influence on my life. Adding that research from the race riot, I wrote a historical fiction short film titled The Example. There's a happiness to starting a new project. It's one of the greatest moments. Striving to tell a story about commonality, history, and legacy was our goal. With there being two sides to every story, again, people questioned, why are you bringing this up? Our intent was never to be controversial, but to shed light on history, understand why it happened and what could be learned. Again, leading with love. In the midst of pre-production, when events like Ferguson, Baltimore, and Tamir Rice in Cleveland flooded the news, we, a person of a darker hue, with my two colleagues, individuals of a lighter hue, 
we were mindful in telling a story that looked as if we were not trying to sensationalize this moment in America. As we gained local media attention during production in 2015, oh, the internet, the sweet, sweet internet. Remarks on a news story about the example garnered comments such as, this movie is going to start a race war. Why are we letting those Hollywood types come in and do this? The only wood we are close to being associated with is the big thicket <laughs> and possibly the piney woods, maybe. Plus, we received our skill set in filmmaking from the institution on MLK Parkway in Highway 69. People were afraid. In attempts to fundraise for this project, I spoke to a prominent community member. The project was receiving fiscal sponsorship, which means anyone who donated would receive a tax write-off. I stated to this person, if you give me one dollar right now, that lets me know that you see us and what we're trying to do. I never received that dollar. Disappointed? Yes. Not seen? Yes but we led the love, the love of storytelling and the love for wanting to leave a legacy that was greater than us. It was because of a common question that has been prevalent in the over two decades of working in the history and documentary medium, who your people? Now, if you're not familiar with this Southeast Texas colloquialism, it translates to who are your people? No matter if you're black, white, or any race, people want to know who are you connected to and if they can trust you. Who are these people asking about the race riot? Who are these people asking about the oldest black neighborhood in Beaumont? Fellow producer Jonathan Tippett and I were tasked with creating a documentary about the Charlton Pollard neighborhood. ExxonMobil brought this project to the Department of Communication and Media with funds to assist students in getting hands-on experience and be paid. Jonathan and I researched, drove around the neighborhood, and we were not able to find an end into the community. Again, I'm from Cleveland, Texas, not of Beaumont. And Jonathan is of a lighter hue. But when you lead with love, you attract. Conversations with the Neighborhood Association and local historians who heard about the project slowly began to yield results. A major revelation was meeting 1961 Charlton Pollard High School graduate, Lynn Simon. <laughs> Simon saw us. He saw the love we had for storytelling and trusted us with telling this story. Simon's name, his words, they were the key in opening the floodgates to the history of the South End. No, you don't know my people, but we know Simon. And Simon says, <laughs> share the legacy of this beloved community. And they did. They trusted us. Leading with Love gave this student production crew a chance to pursue their craft of filmmaking and be paid. The unease on the side of the students and their interviewees quickly vanished once the moving tales of hardship, heartache, triumph, and success were shared. Those connected to the South End felt seen and this group of staff and students from Lamar University were passionate about telling their history. The students connected with the interviewees, having a reverence for what they experienced, how they survived, and how they thrived. The tears that you see in the documentary, those tears were mirrored in the student production crew on set. 
This is two generations separated by many decades in a situation where you did not think they would connect, but they bonded. That is the power of art. That is the power of creativity. That's the power of filmmaking. This is how history is passed down from one generation to another. Knowledge about how this community was born on the cornerstone of education is able to live on. Thriving businesses and nightlife that featured artists such as James Brown and many other artists on the Chitlin circuit can now spark conversations about the past. The robbery between Charlton Pollard and Hebert High School. That story that stirs up so much passion has inspired others to tell their stories about the place they call home. Leading with love allowed the example, and they will talk about us, the Charlton Pollard story, to world premieres at the historic Jefferson Theater to crowds of over 350 people in 2016 and 2022. The historical fiction short film about the 1943 Baltimore race riot was accepted into over 35 film festivals across the United States and Canada. The project has received distribution from or has played on platforms such as Amazon Video, IndieFlix, Quelly TV, Direct TV, and many more. They will talk about us, the Charlton Pollard story was named Best Documentary and or won first place at the Urban Media Makers Film Festival in Atlanta, the Boomtown Film and Music Festival, the Gulf Coast Film and Video Festival, and the Press Club of Southeast Texas. This project has screened at several film festivals nationally and internationally in Paris, France. Yet and still, the notion of fear and insecurity comes with accomplishments. People not pleased that universities in various disciplines invited me to talk about the work, questioned the value of these visits to the department. With a short film and documentary in a presentation titled Beaumont's Black History and Moving Pictures, the faculty, students, staff, and alumni of the Lamar University Department of Communication and Media has given insight into the lives of African Americans in Southeast Texas. Beaumont's Black History in Moving Pictures has screened at Lamar, Prairie View a and Stephen F. Austin, Sam Houston State, Texas State, Rice, and Louisiana State Universities, and the University of Central Oklahoma. This project was added to the collection at the Black Film and Cinema Archive at Indiana University. The Black Film Center and Archive is the only repository in the world that is wholly dedicated to the collecting, preserving, and making available historically and culturally significant films about black people. To answer those interviews, to answer those individuals leading with love, this work has given dreamers interested in filmmaking and telling stories opportunities to see that it is possible to be successful in their craft in Southeast Texas. This work has taken the name of Lamar University and the Department of Communication and Media in places and discussions that they've never seen or heard before. This short film and documentary has shed light on history that should not be forgotten. It has caused a people, a community, to be seen. And their story has inspired people across the globe. The history being shared inspired individuals in this community to see and understand their value. There are plans to create an African American History Museum in Southeast Texas. This work has me humbly and graciously standing in front of you today. As this work is being accepted to the Terrell Historical Library, 81 years later, on the same streets where the 1943 Beaumont race riot took place, with the unanimous blessing of the Historic Landmark Commission, Beaumont City Council, and possibly future approval from the Texas Historical Commission, we are a block away from the location of a historic 
date marker for the 1943 Beaumont race riot. There are people that never saw the vision, but love understood the vision. There are only two emotions, love and fear. All positive emotions come from love. All negative emotions come from fear. I guarantee you, in this journey, I've experienced a great deal of those emotions. Because of this work that is going into the repository, I know they will talk about us. This moment, the production crews of these projects, the people, the history, and I hope, love. Thank you. Are you ready to make the presentation? Mr. Grace, would you come up? Um, Y'all need to stand probably in the front. In the front. So you can see. Uh, Over here. I do want to invite anyone that does want to uh, do a tour, we'll have a tour. And then afterwards, I guess we'll have refreshments. So, you know, we can form up. And what I would think is probably down here, I'll talk first. You know, this is the old First Baptist Church built in 1903. Then we can go over to genealogy. It's kind of one of our crown jewels. And then we can go upstairs and I can show you the uh, local history archives where all of our primary source materials are kept, as well as our different uh, uh, scanning uh, machines and things that we have up there that we put. Uh, thanks to the Terrell Historical Library Association onto our uh, digital portal site, as well as, you know, I can you know, talk about more about the building and our collections in general. Thank you. Before uh, Mr. Grace does the tour, I just want to take a minute because Gordon talked about and some of the rest of you in here know. But Mr. Simon, would you stand up and let them see you, please? This is Mr. Lynn Simon. <laughs> he is a historian here in the Beaumont area and if you have an afternoon to listen to the history of the black community in Beaumont, make an appointment with Mr. Lynn Simon. <laughs> he is a wonderful gift to the community. So, and this is his wife sitting next to him, Carolyn Simon. Okay. Um, did you want? To, did you want to introduce some of the people from Charlton Paul as alumni? This is Mrs. Ellis, and she is the president of the alumni, uh, the Charlton Paul alumni. So did you want to come up and introduce them? And
I'm ready uh, to give a tour so I can talk about this room first and what we have in here. I can tell you we have uh, 16,000 uh, volumes of books here. They're uh, specifically Texas history as well as Texas biography. And then also we have a, a uh, local Beaumont history collection in here. Uh, also we have a small art book collection in the back. And then of course, next door we have uh, 13 volumes of uh, genealogy books. We also have the Beaumont Enterprise and Journal on Microfilm. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Ancestry, of course, for you know, people coming in doing genealogy. We have uh, also Heritage Hub. That is a, another uh, database system which is for uh, doing uh, research on uh, obituaries. Also, we have, of course, uh, Heritage Quest. We also have uh, our ancestors, which is the New England Historical and Genealogical Society. That contains uh, uh, different, mostly vital records for New England, as well as the uh, Mid-Atlantic states. And then, of course, we also have Family Search, which is the Mormon Church. Uh, we do have people that come in to uh, assist researchers doing their genealogy. Uh, the local chapter, the DAR, comes in once a month, the first uh, Friday uh, of the month. We also have a gentleman now who comes in, I think it's every two Tuesdays of the uh, month, and he is specifically providing uh, people with uh, research assistance related to our uh, Louisiana collection. We have all of the different Faber A. Bear books for both uh, Southwest as well as uh, South Louisiana, the uh, Catholic parishes. We get a lot of people coming in, you know, doing research, you know, in those uh, particular uh, uh, collections because, you know, they have a lot of ancestry that has come from Louisiana, particularly over to the petrochemical uh, industries here in Texas. Um, also upstairs, as I said, we have a local history archives. We have uh, 720 collections up there. Uh, they're fairly substantial. Uh, some of them are like uh, 300, 500 uh, boxes, which is probably about three, four rows, continuous rows of archival material. Uh, one that comes to mind, or two or three that come to mind, are we uh, recently got the uh, Beaumont Enterprise, their uh, reference library. That's all of their subject files, and that is a, a treasure trove of information when people are you know, wanting to find out about particular events, people, uh, well-known landmarks, that sort of thing. It's a ready resource for us to be able to access. Uh, the other thing we recently got, we have a lot of churches that have given us records, including the First Baptist Church. And of course, we're in the, uh, the sanctuary, what used to be the First Baptist Church built in 1903. Uh, they left this particular uh, uh, building to build a larger church in 1924. So we recently, I guess it's been about six, seven years now, we received their, what was called their History Heritage Collection. Uh, they moved from their uh, second facility after they left here on Willow and Calder and they uh, downsized. So uh, in the process, we were able to acquire their historical materials. And of course, now they're out on uh, Forsum, or Folsom, I'm, excuse me, and Major Drive. So we were really pleased to get that. Uh, we received the first United Methodist Church too recently, and that's something like about 300 cubic feet of records. We have a l whole host of, you know, personal papers, organizational records, uh, 
a lot of what we have upstairs we have digitized uh, we have it online for access that's what I was telling you about our resource guide here it's if you go to our tarot historical library historical collections that's everything that we have digitized in terms of our archival collections there's a hundred and 11 collections that are on that particular site, almost 100,000 digital images with metadata that you can search extensively for what you're interested in. The other thing is, too, uh, we have uh, all of our, a lot of our finding aids upstairs, they are online, too, on our uh, <clears throat> archive space site. We have 145 collections. So a lot of people, you can go down to the box folder uh, level to find what you're looking for. So we've basically, you know, we've, we're in the digital age, you know, because, you know, again, as uh, Gordon uh, Williams was saying, you know, you know, the library is no longer just, you know, four walls. You know, people, a lot of people are not going to be able to have access to come in here you know, to visit. So they're, a majority of them are, you know, using the web to find what they're interested in. Uh, as far as uh, other things in here, of course, we have, you know, the beautiful stained glass. That's original to the church. The uh, architecture in this particular building is uh, Gothic and New Romanesque. The uh, actual church, it was built by uh, Alonzo Dawson, and he was an architect in Houston. He built five churches in Houston, and one of the churches that he was building in Houston, he was building at this particular time, this particular building. So what he did is he went between the uh, you know, two cities uh, half days to oversee the construction of both the churches. As you can see on the outside, of course, it's limestone, and that was quarried from Carthage, Missouri. It was brought down here by rail. And of course, William Casper Terrell is over here. That's his painting. Of course, he was a wealthy philanthropist. He came down from Iowa right at the time of Spindletop. And then, of course, he when this particular building became available after uh, the church left, he purchased it, renovated it, and then, of course, gave it to the city as the first uh, public library. It opened in uh, August of 1926. So we remain the main library, the only library, here in Beaumont up through to 1974. And that's, of course, when they built the new main library uh, on uh, college. So, and then of course we've you know, expanded out now. We have uh, what, I guess it's three branches. We have Elmo Willard, we have uh, Theodore Johns, and then we also have, of course, Miller Library. So we've, uh, you know, we're continually working in the community, trying to get people interested and uh, you know, let them know our valuable sources of information. We're also always collecting information too. We're interested in the history of Beaumont, so we're always out looking for you know donations. Anything you know that's of his historical value, you know, we are always interested in because it you know builds upon our collection, and of course the strengths of our collection too. Uh, as far as uh, other things that are going on, uh, we've recently got a text treasures grant. Uh, we are uh, digitizing right now the news clips for the KFDM TV, so we're really pleased with that. Got a grant on that. Uh, currently, we're working, we're thinking about doing another grant this year on a gentleman, uh, Clyde Vincent. He was uh, very instrumental in, uh, first of all, he was interested in Cajun culture and, uh, and art. And he uh, has a lot in his collection. He, he gave it to us about, I think it was in 2005. There's a lot about 
uh, Cajun music, poetry, and um, just the history of the area of here in, in uh, southeast Texas as well as southwest Louisiana. So we're hoping to get, you know, a, a grant for that. Uh, we've, you know, we're continually uh, building out, basically, and also trying to extend out to uh, basically, um, you know, uh, stakeholders in the community to, you know, see what information is out there. Because, you know, we only have a fraction of, you know, information related to Beaumont. We're a relatively new institution. I mean, we haven't been collecting for hundreds of years or anything. Uh, the historical library, you know, came into existence uh, right after the time that uh, the uh, main library moved over to its new facility in 1974. So we have a lot in terms of some of the, some families that were here in Beaumont, but as far as the history goes, um, I would say probably the strengths of our history are probably from probably around 1901 going forward. So we're always interested in, you know, the history that's still out there. So if you care, I can, you know, walk you around and, you know, show you the different uh, areas of the library and, you know, discuss a little bit more in further detail what uh, resources there are. Yes. There was exactly right. Uh huh. It was over. I think at where Central Park is, I believe. No, it wasn't. Okay. Oh, it wasn't. Okay, so. There you go. Hmm. Is it? Okay. Lynn knows. Good. So that's why we love about, you know, people that have, you know, within the, you know, African American community that, you know, have all of this historical information because, you know, we lack it. So. Yeah, I think we have a photo in our collection of, I think, Charlton Pollard students studying, and I don't know if it's at the school. It may be at the school, they, you know, with the library there. So, yeah, that's, that's the problem. I mean, the history is so fragmented, what we have. You know, we only have what we have. So that's one thing we're always interested in. Like I was talking to uh, Gordon Williams, we'd love to be able to find, you know, the uh, three African American newspapers that were published here, because the simple fact that most of the, you know, uh, history, uh, you know, important things that were going on in the black community were published in those newspapers. So you know, because of segregation. So, you know, without that you know, those newspapers, we really don't have a whole lot of information. And I know with the African American community coming in to use our collections quite often, even with obituaries and things, they're not finding what they're looking for. And I can guarantee it was probably because it was published in the African American newspaper. So, you know, we're, we're missing that important history, definitely. What I like to do is be able to talk to, you know, different community members, maybe finding, you know, out just, you know, in the local African-American community, just what, you know, what sources they know of. 
the, you know, fervor, you know, our quest to maybe track down important things that, you know, are still out there. Hopefully they're still, they're still there. They have not been, you know, discarded over the years. Oh, really? Mm, okay. Oh, really? No, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Can I ask you, so are those papers, are they extent, are they still in existence or, or in Houston, I wonder? Or? Okay. Excellent, yeah. I, I definitely need to talk with you then about it. Yes, please. Okay. Well, why don't we go over? I want to show you the genealogy reading.